Do you want to parent your children with intention, assertively, from a connected way instead of out of impulse? If that's your desire, then this podcast episode is for you because I'm going to share with you three techniques that will help you get there. I'm going to walk you through the story of my mom's parenting. I grew up in traditional parenting, Latino, Colombian, traditional parenting. The chancla flew up and hit my face. <laughs> I was spanked. I was putting time out. She did not call it time out, but I was putting time out. My things were taken away. I was yelled at for the first 16 years of my life. Then my mom decided to become a respectful parenting and she truly healed her relationship with me. Now we are best friends. We call each other multiple times a day. The day that I feel that it's night and I don't know about my mom, I feel the urge to call her not out of guilt, but out of like, I want to connect with her. I want to be around her. If that's the kind of relationship that you want to have with your children when they are adults, then stick around because this episode, I'm going to share with you her story and these three techniques that she applied unknowingly. <laughs> she was not aware of it, but she did, which are actually techniques that we help our coaching clients in HIC parenting apply with their kids to bring more peace to their homes and raise emotionally healthy children. Welcome, welcome to the Parenting with Understanding podcast. This is a new episode and I'm going to share with you three techniques to parent your children with intention and not impulse, not reactivity, not yelling. And I'm going to feature today the story of my mom. I wish I could have brought her here today, but she doesn't speak English. So I don't know how, maybe I should bring her one day. Possible. Yes, I could do it. I could translate the things she says. Would you like me to bring my mom to the Parenting with Understanding podcast? <laughs> well, today I'm going to talk about her because she broke her cycle of reactivity and parenting out of impulse and started parenting intentionally with understanding since I was 16. So if you have an older child or if you feel, I wonder if the damage is already done, if there is a way for me to repair my relationship with my child, it is possible because my mom did it. She started this respectful parenting journey when I was already 16. Before I was spanked, I was sent to my room, I was yelled at, all the things that traditional Latino parents do, at least the old school ones. The world is changing and I've seen amazing, respectful Latino parents now. But I'm saying back in the day, I'm 37, I'm not new in this world. <laughs> okay, so what is the first thing that happened? I remember I was 16 and then there was a time that my mom shamed me or yelled at me. I don't know which one of the two or it was the two. And then I just looked at her dead on the eye. And then I said, mom, if you were to treat me this way, why do you have me in the first place? If you were to treat me poorly, why do you decide to have me? And it wasn't with an attitude. There was sadness and grief in my tone and my eyes. And it was a brave move. <laughs> from my end as well, because I was expecting that she was going to gaslight me. So if you're new to the term, gaslighting is basically denying the other person's emotional experience or thoughts. So it may sound something like this. What do you mean by treating you poorly? What do you mean by not treating you well? Don't you have a head under your roof? A head under your roof. <laughs> Don't you have a roof under your head? Yeah, that's the, the correct expression. Aren't you fed? You have new clothes on. You gotta be grateful. That's the definition of gaslighting. So I was expecting that because I received that the first 16 years of my life, but something astonishing happened. I was kind of trembling a little bit. I was nervous, but she came to me I was already kind of lynching, you know, when you were hit. 
your whole life. Uh, I was expecting the chancla to fall on my head and instead something magical happened. She came to me, she looked at me, she grabbed my hands and then she said nothing. <laughs> she said nothing. She just stared at me for a little bit, not with an overpowering look of I'm giving you the look type of thing, but just there was grief. There was grief in her eyes as well. And then she looked at me and said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What can I do so you feel safe with me? And then we had a great conversation. And I remember that day I felt safe to open up to her for the first time. Let's go all these years today. I'm 37 years old and we talk multiple times in the day. We talk superficial things. We talk deep things. We travel back in time to remember my childhood. And there is no guilt or shame because there was forgiveness. There was compassion towards me, towards herself. So the very first technique that she unknowingly applied to go from reactive parenting, from parenting out of impulse to parenting with understanding with intention, it is to pause and listen, the art of active listening. So when your child expresses their emotions, pause and listen. Listen beneath the language they're using. Listen beneath their words. Because sometimes children are not as assertive as I was at 16 to express their needs. Sometimes they may say it in more, I would say, hurtful ways. They may say things like, you don't love me. You're a bad mommy. I don't like you anymore. I hate you. I don't want to be around you. Go away. Why are you here? Shut up. Get out of my way. All those expressions are cries for, I feel disconnected. I long to have connection. This interaction didn't feel connected to me. So my nervous system is reacting to this. So the number one step, parent with intention, without impulse, is the art of active listening. Marcela, are you saying that I just let them treat me whatever way they want to treat me and tell me all those hurtful things? I'm not saying that. Listen to my words. Active listening. I'm not saying allow them to treat you any kind of way. So when you practice active listening, you are decoding the real message of needs. That's parenting with understanding, by the way. It's part of our methodology here in HIC Parenting. You are decoding the language of needs. You are extracting those needs out of that language. And then you are talking to your children assertively. It could sound similar to, mom, go away. It does not sound respectful. If you're needing space, you can say, mom, can I have space? Or say, mom, I hate you. It doesn't sound respectful. And it hurts my feelings. So what is that what you're really feeling? You're feeling disconnected? Maybe you felt hurt when mommy yelled at you. Is that what you're trying to say? Okay. So let's practice that and say that instead. And I'm sorry that I yelled at you. It should have not happened. That's how you parent intentionally with understanding and not impulse. And my mom did it. And that was the start of our healing journey. The second habit is forming new habits of relating to me. So I was already used to the yelling, the spanking, the throwing the chancla. So we are creatures of habits. I kind of thought and had the conception that my mom meant business when she was angry yelling. Otherwise, it was not so serious because that's what she got me used to. So she started creating a new habit from the consistency of her responses that no matter what, she wasn't going to get there. So I started learning that even her calm voice is a firm, serious voice. That I should listen to her calm voice because that's all I got from her. Was she perfect that like she never yelled at me after that? No, I lived with her until I was 22. So from 16 to 22, many things happened. She has a chronic illness. She has arthritis. She suffers from anxiety and depression. She has a very tough situation because my brother has Down syndrome. 
I have autism. My dad has autism, even though he denies it. I know he has it <laughs> because he's me all over. So it was tough for her, for sure. Nevertheless, from zero to 16, yelling, threatening punishment was the norm. From 16 to 22, when I left the house, yelling was the rarity, was not the normal. So I'm saying that to say that it's not about being perfect. You can still allow imperfection, matter of fact, I have to confess today, this morning, I yell at one of my twins after like, I don't remember the last time I yelled at them and today happened not because they deserved it. I had a high fever. I was getting them ready for school and their normal age appropriate morning routine stalling that I'm very like I, I handle it well and easily in other times. It was daunting to me today because I had a high fever, not so high, but you know, I'm moderate fever. I was not feeling well at all, at all, at all. So when my son was kind of like fighting it to brush teeth, I yelled at him and he looked at me right away. He was kind of like, whoa, this is different. What happened here? Instead of like, oh, I'm used to that. So I'm saying that to say that when you create a new habit means that you are consistent with what you choose to be as a parent, how you choose to respond, how you choose to show up, whatever thing you choose, that that's the norm, not the exception. Because when parents come to us, HIC parenting, by the way, all the parents who come to us are amazing. And I see a pattern of, but I'm always gentle. I'm, I always repeat things kindly until I cannot hold it anymore. And then I yell and I say, okay, does this happen every day? That you're calm and kind for 10, 15 minutes and then they yell. So there is a consistency there. The consistency is that you're calm and kind and then you yell every single day. So you create a new habit. When we space out the yelling, maybe not every day. In my case, I went from every day back in the day when I did foster care to every other day, to every week, to when it happened, it was like, okay, this was abnormal. And that's what happened to me this morning. I remember I even called my husband and, and I said, I feel a lot of compassion for the parents that we work with in HIC parenting because I feel very guilty. And I don't even remember the last time I yelled, but I feel guilty I did it this time. And a lot of the parents that come to our coaching program, that's the norm. For the first weeks, they start seeing transformation after the second, third week of coaching. So what is the difference? For me, what turned the corner for me was coaching. It wasn't reading books. It wasn't listening to podcasts. All that gave me awareness. And just remembering my mom's parenting the last years of my life with her, in her case, it was parenting education and personalized guidance as well. She was under a, a parenting guidance from that moment on. And for me, it was that too. How come I didn't follow my mom's footsteps? Because I had childhood trauma from the first 16 years of my life. So that weights a lot. That weights a lot considering that the first seven years of somebody's life is their former years. So yes, she healed our relationship, but I still had a lot to heal from. And parenting coaching, that personalized guidance, that me bringing my personal experience to somebody who is trained to help me considering my particular needs, that's what helped me go from parenting out of impulse to parenting with intention. I have an invitation for you. If you want to parent with intention, if you want to get out of the talking nicely, yelling, regret, that cycle of frustration. And if you know the general guidance here on, on the podcast has given you some awareness and some change, but not the transformation that you need to bring peace to your parenting, I encourage you to access our free parenting assessment call. You are going to be one-on-one, -on -one, either with me, Marcela, or with one of our HIC parenting advisors. We are equipped to assess your parenting so you get crystal clear on what you need to bring peace to your parenting. This is not a coaching session. This is an assessment where you're going to leave 
that call with a lot of clarity and more peace, an aroma that you will decide to apply with us in coaching or not. At the end of the call, if you want to continue with us, we will enroll you as a coaching client. If not, then you can live with your assessment to start transforming your parenting. So to book this free parenting assessment call, all you have to do is go to apply.hicparenting.com, apply.hicparenting.com. That's the link to our calendar. Book a time and a date that works for you and your spouse if you have one and attend the call. If you are not able to attend the call, don't book the call, please, because we have high demand and oftentimes people end up on a waiting list. So if you know that you can commit to attend and to start working in your parenting, this is a free call. All you have to do is apply that at hicparenting.com or you can go to the link in our bio at Heimpad Club or our website, hicparenting.com. And schedule your free parenting assessment call with me or one of our HIC parenting advisors. I want to feature the story of Susan. She is one of our coaching clients. Susan went from controlling. Yes, she had a perfectionist pattern from power struggles with her children to feeling more at peace in her parenting and healing her inner child with HIC parenting coaching. Where were you at emotionally in your parenting before you enrolled in HIC parenting and where are you at right now? So right when I decided to sign up for HIC parenting, I was kind of in a place where I thought I had collected a lot of information on how I should be parenting. I thought I knew all of the tips, how to approach things, but you know, I found myself doing my best and then majority of the time at the end of the day or at a weak moment just running into those same bad habits and allowing myself to just kind of blow up or you know kind of yell at my kids and then feeling the remorse afterwards and you know collecting the information online through social media just wasn't enough for me and I needed some real custom and nuanced support. When I'm looking at myself now, after the whole program, it's like a weight has been lifted. And personally, I feel like I am the person that I should be. And all of the things that were holding me back, like even anxiety, uh, which was a big thing for me personally, uh, I have seriously been lifted. So let's review the last two techniques. Number one, the technique of active listening. And number two, the technique of building new habits. The third one is to pause, to pause before responding. Remember that moment that my mom took my hands and she said nothing. And it's not about giving our children the I'm going to kill you kind of look. It's just truly pausing and assessing what's happening. Because a lot of the times our nervous system tricks us into feeling the thing that's happening with our children, that the spilled milk is a real life-threatening emergency. And if we don't clean up that mess, then it has to be clean, it has to be fixed. Like I have to teach my child a lesson right away, otherwise I'm a permissive parent. All that comes from scarcity, mindset that comes from childhood that from those patterns that convinced us that children are out to get us and if we don't get them then they're going to walk all over us that's our rooted belief that might be an unconscious process when we see the spilled milk and we try to clean it up right away and teach our children the lesson we need to be careful we need to we need to this we need to that when many times they're not even ready to receive instruction yet. If they're crying, if they're in the middle of a fight, if they're tantruming, their nervous system is taking over their logical thinking. So taking a pause is about us and it's about helping our children as well take a pause. Okay. All the egg carton is broken. <laughs> the floor is a mess. That could stay there for 10 minutes while I compose myself 
well, I compose my children and we revisit it. It's okay. Unless you have a dog that's going to lick the eggs or a baby. Well, like you assess the situation. You know what I'm saying? You will know if something is a real emergency when you pause. Most of the times, the things that we convince ourselves is an emergency is not. That will help you so, so, so much. Go from parenting with impulse to parenting with understanding of yourself, of your children, of your needs, of their needs. So the three techniques to go from parenting with impulse to parenting with understanding is number one, active listening. Number two, creating new habits. And number three, to pause. I encourage you to practice them this week. If this podcast episode gave you value, if the Parenting with Understanding podcast gave you value, would you do me a favor? This is my birthday week and words of affirmation is my love language. The best birthday gift that you could ever give me is to leave a positive review on how my work here in the Parenting with Understanding podcast has helped you bring peace to your parenting and raise emotionally healthy children. So to leave a review, all you have to do is open the description or open the podcast episode and click review, write a positive review because that will help me. Number one, that's my birthday gift. Number two, it will help me reach more parents. Remember to follow us on all social media platforms at Heimfeld Club, and it only takes understanding of yourself and of your children to transform your parenting. That's Parenting with Understanding. Thank you.